Good morning, Year 6. So, for our last week before half term, what myself and Mrs. Rowe have decided to do is just to recap some of the learning that we've done throughout Year 6. Um, we think this would be really useful just to refresh some of the things that we did back in the autumn, uh, things that we did in September, October, November, December, all those things we did before Christmas. Um, over this week, we will go through some of those things because these are skills that are really important that you do know, you do understand. And these are things we would have been doing in class anyway, going over previous learning that we've done. So we are learning to round numbers accurately. So this is one of the first things that we did in year six this year, something that you would have done previously as well in other years um, to round numbers accurately. And it's a really useful skill to be able to do. So, what we have here is a place value chart. We would have seen these uh, many, many times um, in school, especially in year six. And this is obviously this only section of the place value chart here, obviously, because it'd go on infinitely to the right after the decimal point, and it'd go in infinitely to the left as well, um, to the left of the decimal point. But this is just the section, the middle section of it, if you like. And we've got the thousands, thousands column, hundreds column, the tens column, the ones column, tenths, hundredths and thousandths. These are the ones after the decimal point or the ones that are less than one. And these can be useful to help us to round. So if I had a question that said round to the nearest thousand. So we're going to round this number to the nearest thousand. Okay. And if I had this number if I had that number there, I've got 8,763 and I'm rounding to the nearest thousand. So which of these numbers is in the thousands column? Now, hopefully you can all spot that straight away and see that it's the eight. But if I was to write this number in here, you can see, can't you? It is the eight there because that three is in the ones, six is in the tens, seven is in the hundreds, eight is in the thousands. So there are eight thousands within this number. <coughs> Excuse me. So if we're rounding to the nearest thousand, the procedure that we need to do, we need to underline the number that we're rounding to the nearest one to. So we're rounding to the nearest thousand. So we underline the number that is in the thousands column. You can see it's the eight. And then we look one next door to the right. And then this is the number, the number to the right of the number that we are rounding that we focus on. Now it's a seven. Now, hopefully you can remember that if a number is between zero and four, the number gets rounded down. If it's between five and nine, the number gets rounded up. So these are the really important things that you need to remember when it comes to rounding. If, a num if this number here is between zero and four, the number gets rounded down. If it's between five, this number is between five and nine, it gets rounded up. So you can see here that this number seven go comes in between five and nine, doesn't it? Five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this number is going to get rounded up. So when we do that, the underlined number goes up by one. So this eight will become a nine. And then the numbers to the right of the underlined number become zeros. So this number, 8,763, to the nearest thousand is 9,000. So this number has been rounded up. Okay, so that's the procedure. Help us remember this. If it's between 0 and 4, round down. 5 and 9, round up. We've seen which number we round the nearest to. In this case, it was 1,000. Nearest 1,000. Underline the number in, the in that column. Look next door and see whether it goes up or down. This seven was between here, so it gets rounded up. The underlying number goes up one, everything to the right becomes zeros. So let's have a go at another one. We're round to the nearest thousand again. And let's have this one. 6,371. So if I was to write this in here. So you can see 6,371, you can see six is clearly the one that again is in the thousands column, we're rounding to the nearest thousand. So that's the number we underline. Then we look next door to the right into the hundreds column and it's a three. 
Now we look, is it between zero and four? Is it between five and nine? It's between zero and four, isn't it? So this number is going to be rounded down. Zero, one, two, three, four. So it's going to get rounded down. So when a number gets rounded down, the underlying number, which is six in this case, stays the same. And then everything to the right becomes zeros. So 6,371 rounded to the nearest thousand is 6,000. It's been rounded down this time. Okay. So the key to remember, if you're rounding up, the underlying number goes up one. If you're rounding down, the underlying number stays the same. So let's have a go at rounding to the nearest 100 this time. So we're rounding to the nearest 100 and I have 749. So to the nearest 100, 749, let's write this in here. So rounding to the nearest 100, aren't we? Which is this number, then we look next door. Zero to four, it gets rounded down, doesn't it? So the underlying number stays the same. Everything to the right becomes zeros. So 749 to the nearest 100 is 700. If I were to keep a similar-ish number, but I was just to increase it by one, and I was to have 750 rounded to the nearest 100 now, we underlined the number in the hundreds column. Look next door, it's five. Now it's between five and nine now, even though this number is only increased by one, because it's between five and nine now, it gets rounded up. So the underlying number goes up by one, seven becomes eight, and then the numbers to the right become zeros. So 750 to the nearest hundred is 800. Okay, so that's just a quick refresher with that. My class are very good at uh, doing that when we're in class. So if we were to have a look now at rounding to the nearest tenth, including the decimals now. So it's rounding to the nearest tenth. So if I had 6.36, this is sometimes why it's useful to write these in. So 6.36. And we're rounding to the nearest tenth, or we could say we're rounding to one decimal place. It means the same thing. Rounding to the nearest tenth is the same as one decimal place. They mean exactly the same things. So rounding to the nearest tenth, this three is in the tenth column, isn't it? Or it's one after the decimal place. So in that case, we look next door to this 6, it's between 5 and 9, so it gets rounded up. So the underlying number goes up 1, and the number to the right becomes a 0. So if we were to write this in here, 6.40, that is a perfectly acceptable answer. But if we're looking at one decimal place, remember, when we have a number that has numbers after the decimal point, and it ends in a 0, it doesn't need to be there, because I could... Just as well put that, there are no thousandths in there, but there are no hundreds in there, so neither of these zeros have to be there. 6.4 is exactly the same as 6.40, which is exactly the same as 6.400. We, it's not necessary for those to be there because there aren't any thousands and there aren't any hundreds, so 6.4. So 6.36 rounded to the nearest tenth, or rounded to one decimal place is 6.4. Okay. So let's have a go at another decimal again. Let's have a go at 17.638. So I was to write this in here, write it in the right column, Mr. Wardren. 17.638. So let's round this now to the nearest hundredth. Round it to the nearest hundredth or two decimal places. I'll just write DP for decimal places. So it's the nearest hundredth or to two decimal places. So which one of these numbers is in the hundredths column? The one, the seven, the six, the three, or the eight? Well, writing it in here helps us, doesn't it? It's two after the decimal place. So it is this column. This is the nearest hundredth, isn't it? It is this three. So then we look next door. We look at this eight. Is it between zero and four? Is it between five and nine? It's between five and nine, isn't it? Because it's eight. So 
the underlying number goes up one, so this three becomes four. Everything to the right goes to zeros. Everything to the left, in this case, stays the same. So if I was to write this in here now, so to two decimal places, so we need two numbers after the decimal point, one, two, this zero doesn't have to be there. So 17.638 rounding to the nearest hundredth or to two decimal places is 17.64. Remember that zero, not necessary, doesn't need to be there. Two decimal places. Good, right, well have a look at you having a go at one of these. So we're about to go to the nearest hundredth again and we'll do 43.213. So you pause the video there, year six, you have a go at that to the nearest hundredth. Right, so let's have a go. Let's write it in here, 43.213. So looking at this to the nearest hundredth, also two decimal places. So this one is in the hundredth column. So that's why we've underlined that one, and that's why this is the three that we're looking at. It's so between zero and four, so it gets rounded down. So if it gets rounded down, remember the underlying number stays the same, and all the numbers to the left stay the same as well. Could put that zero in there, but even that zero will need to come off anyway, because we're only putting two decimal places in. So if we write it out underneath, 43.21. It's been rounded down, hasn't it? Good. So hopefully you got to the same answer as I did. And then let's have a go at two more and then you can have a go at doing some of these yourself. So this time, could you round to the nearest 10? To the nearest 10 for me. And could you round, let's have a go at, to the nearest 10. Could you have a go, even though it's a decimal, number could you still round that to the nearest 10 for me so if i write this in 37.43 and round it to the nearest 10 which of these numbers is in the tens column we can see it's the three and then we look next door don't we do we round it down or do we round it up it gets rounded up because this is a seven so the underlying number goes up one and everything to the right becomes zeros. Now, we just like the two we looked at previously, if you've got your decimal point and the numbers end in zeros, they don't need to be there. So that ends in a zero, that ends in a zero. They, they simply don't need to be there. Those 37.43 to the nearest 10 is just 40. Technically, that is correct as well, but remember, they, they don't need to be there because there is, there is nothing after the decimal point this is a whole number isn't it it's 40 good right we'll have a look at one more and then you can have a go at some yourself so let's go with there you go it's the trickiest one we've done so 3200 and 17.218, I'm going to write this in here for you to help you. And I would like you to find, for this one, I'd like you to round this to two numbers for me. Could you round it to the nearest hundred? And could you please round it to the nearest thousandth? So you were writing two answers for this one, year six. You were writing it to the nearest 100 and you'll be doing it to the nearest thousandth okay so pause the video there see if you can round those two and i'll tell you how you should have done it okay so let's round to the nearest hundred first i'll do it in blue so nearest hundred that's the hundreds column because we can see here it's hundreds there isn't it so it's a two so in that case, what we need to do is we need to look next door, don't we? To here. 
and we can see it's a 1. So in that case, we round down. So the underlying number stays the same, numbers to the left stay the same, everything else becomes zeros. Now, so we've got 32, uh, sorry, 3,200.000, just like before. We, these don't need to be here, which means the decimal point doesn't need to be there. These ones do, though, don't they? Because if we were to take these off, it turns to 32. Remember, it's only the ones that are after the decimal point. So 3,217.218 to the nearest 100 is 3,200. So if we were to do this now to the nearest thousandth, okay, so I'll just rub that out. This number to the nearest thousandth. Which number is in the thousandths column? It's the eight. And if I look next door, I'll see you be saying to me, well, hang on, Mr. One, there's nothing there. There's nothing for us to round. Remember what we've done this previously. You can add the zero in there. That's, te that's the ten thousandths column. It's a zero. There's no ten thousandths. And you can see here, then we can round it, can't we? It gets rounded down. So you can see there, it gets rounded down because there are no ten thousandths. It's still... We still look next door, we still look to the one next to with that the one that we're rounding to. We don't think, oh, we'll just underline the one and then look at the eight, because then you'd be rounding to the nearest hundredth. We still round to the nearest thousandth. That's what the question was. So we'll look at this zero. In that case, it gets rounded down, doesn't it? So the underline number stays the same, that will stay as eight. Everything to the left stays identical as well. So you can see in just writing underneath it the numbers that are directly above it. So, and we could put that zero in there, but round to the nearest thousand, we can see there. So we can see that answer is already rounded to the nearest thousand. Very well done, year six. So there is a worksheet attached to this on Google Classroom for you to have a go at. Have a go at solving those and you can send them back to your teacher. Thanks a lot.